I'm going to say a word now that as a Logic Pro user, you are going to probably dislike and probably think is very boring and probably think is just another video about a feature that they describe adequately well in the manual. So what's the point of watching it? But just bear with me. Okay. You ready? Here comes the word. Screen sets. Boring, isn't it? No, it's not. The reason screen sets aren't boring is because I've started using them in a way that they don't tell you in the manual. They don't tell you how great they actually are. They're not just about like zooming into a certain part of the screen. That is indeed very, very boring and kind of useless because everyone's quite quick with a mouse and keyboard now and it's, it's just garbage. But these are shortcuts and really easy ways of just getting to a destination where you need to be really quickly without pressing a load of buttons. It's easier if I just show you. So just let, let's take a look. Now your preconceived notion of a screen set is that we press a number, we get a new screen, we can make that one large and we can zoom in to a certain thing. That now up the top is number two. And when we press number two, we'll go to that zoom. When we press number one, we'll go back to our normal zoom. One, two, one, two. Okay, well, yeah, that is true. But there's loads of stuff that are included in screen sets that you don't really realize. For instance, if I go to number two and I click on catch playhead, then what that's going to do is just select catch playhead for that screen set. So see them in screen set two and catch playhead is selected. If I go to number one, catch playhead is off. If I go to number two, it's on. Number one, it's off. So if I'm moving around, so say, let's go to number two and we're at bar 10. And if I'm playing around here and then I press number two again, well, it's catching my playhead and it's going to the section that I'm actually on. So it's retaining that amount of zoom, but for those particular tracks, but that in itself is not really like cool. That's not really that good. It's kind of, it should really be, shouldn't it? But the next step is where it gets really interesting. So we're at number one. Let's go to number three. Let's just make this nice and big. This bit is awkward. I'll give you that much. Now, something that I often have to do is go in and tune some vocals. And every time I have to zoom in like this and go into the bit that I want and then press command and F and go in and zoom. Okay, so now I'm at the spot that has taken me, what, eight, 10 seconds to get there but this is all gonna be saved within that screen set. So I'm at screen set number three at the moment, and this is zoomed in on my chorus harmonies in flex pitch, and I can tune it. If I go back to number one, flex is no longer on, and I'm no longer zoomed in on anything, but when I press number three, flex is back on and it's zoomed in. So flex retains that amount of zoom, and it also remembers the fact that I've got flex pitch on, and it also catches the playhead. So if I go back to number one, and let's say, let's go to the first chorus instead. So it's gonna be bar 43, and then press number three. Because I've got catch playhead on, it's gonna zoom in on that section. So tuning vocals is something that I, I'm often listening through to the full track, and I just hear a little bit of vocal that needs tuning. So say you're listening through to this track, and you just hear, okay, there's a little bit of vocal in this chorus that needs tuning. Well, screen set number three has already got catch playhead on. So wherever the cursor is, is going to go to, it's going to go to flex pitch. And it's going to remember that I'm zoomed in on my vocals here. So that's like my vocal tuning screen set. It's not just about zooms. It's about functions within those zooms and loads and loads of functions within logic you can actually kind of map to those zooms but just so you can kind of keep track of these screen sets you can actually rename them as well so in the screen set menu at the top if you just go to the number so i've got loads and loads set up here you'll see why in a moment screen set number three is where we are at the moment so if you just go to rename then this one is my vocal tuning screen set go okay and then I know just by looking at it, that's my vocal tuning. Number one was like zoomed out on absolutely everything. Um, number two, what was that? Drums. Oh no, the guitars. So if I go back to number three, I can see that that's vocal tuning. And I know each time that it's going to go to exactly what I want it to be. And if I go up into that menu, I can kind of keep track of where everything is if I forget it. And so many more things that you can do within these screen sets. So for example, let's go to number four. Let's make this big again. This is the only annoying bit. Just forget this. Let's zoom in on the guitars here, for example. Let's put our catch playhead on and let's press our A for automation. So we've now got on screen set number four, 
automation for our guitars. So this is a bar nine at the moment. If I go back to number one and then say we're on the last chorus and say we want to automate this one, we just go to number four and we're on our guitars. So it's just helping us to zoom around with automation in mind and flex in mind as well. And the example previously with the vocals is quite a powerful one because if we go to another one, let's get the screen set number five, for example. Let's do the annoying thing again. And vocals often kind of catch my ear as something's out of time or something needs rectifying. And another one that does that is often drums. So if I bring on flex and we've got catch playhead on, on number five, then I'm in flex mode and I can just jump in and just zoom in the amount that I want and just trim these bits up as I need to. If I come out and I'm just playing through the track, blah, 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 and then I hear something that's kind of out of time, press number five, it's going to catch the playhead to exactly where I want to be and I can just move that timing of that particular drum. So screen sets are not only a way of zooming in and going into different windows or anything like that. In fact, I almost never use them for kind of windows. If I'm in my main kind of zoom, this is the one that I kind of normally have most of the time. If I want to go to the mixer, I press X. If I want to go to my track editor, whatever you want to call this down here, I press E. I kind of know the shortcuts there well enough and I'm used to having stuff at the bottom of the screen more than I'm used to having like stuff come up. So the way they kind of tell you to use screen sets is, okay, let's go to number six, let's go to window, let's go to open mixer and then let's make that one nice and big. And then we know that number six is our screen set for mixer. So number one is going to be our main arrange window. Six is the mixer. Well, to me, that's kind of useless because there's so much missing at the top of the mixer. It's a very strangely designed kind of way of doing it. And it's sort of the old way of doing it. And doing this brings screen sets into 2023. You know, if you're watching this in 2023, hopefully in the future, you might not be. But it's the whole idea of having stuff come up in the bottom part of the screen. I remember a few versions ago, Cubase just cottoned onto that. And it was like, yeah, that is a, that is a thing. Like you should be doing that because opening up windows and separate windows for different screens is just annoying. But having X and just having it down there, there's nothing above that. There's nothing else that you need. So using screen sets in the way that they kind of tell you you should use screen sets to me is, is useless. It, it doesn't really serve a massive amount of purpose because shortcuts and shortcut keys are so widespread that we know how to get our way around. What I really want from a screen set is to do something that just one key can't. If I want to bring up a mixer, I'll press X. I don't need to press six because I can just press X. It's one key. But if I want to zoom in on a certain section that's caught the playhead and is going to bring on flex and is going to enable me to edit the drums at that specific moment that I've just heard, well, that's worthy of one key press. I don't want to be scrolling in, pressing modifier keys, turning flex on and going crazy with that. It's, it's useless. To me, that's worth one key press. Just in the same way as bringing up the mixer is worth one key press. And screen sets, to me, that's how they're most valuable. Now, you can have up to 99 of these if you really want to. The way that you can actually get after number nine, you can just hold shift and press like 11. So it's gonna to go to 11 or one, two, it's gonna to go to 12, but you've got to hold shift every time you do that for both numbers as well. So you can't just hold shift, press one and then release. You've got to do it for the whole lot. For some reason it doesn't work for zeros because that's just for stop, isn't it, in logic. So don't use zeros, just use ones to nines and multiples thereof. So there you go, a whistle stop tour around screen sets in Logic Pro. I find them so much more useful than I myself kind of gave them credit for previously. And I find them more useful than the manual, the online manual kind of gives them credit for as well, because they're sort of a footnote. They're just sort of mentioned that you can, oh, you can have screen sets and you can take a look at different things by pressing a number. Well, yeah, you can, but there's far more to it. And if you're constantly moving in and flex timing, flex pitching, automating certain sections within your session, then screen sets are definitely something worth taking a look at. I'll see you again soon. Take care.